Biovivacious. I am Sebastian. Biovivacious is a YouTube channel dedicated to clear fundamentals of biosciences and make the subject exciting. Now let us look at the clinical significance of pentose phosphate pathway. If the clinical significances are manifested in two ways, one is due to the deficiency of uh, an enzyme that is thymine. So as you know, thymine is the core enzyme form of thymine is called the thymine pyrophosphate, which was involved in, uh, uh, in activating the enzyme uh, Transketolase enzyme, and we have seen that it is responsible for uh, transferring the two carbon unit. So, this deficiency can result into um, paralysis of the eye movement, etc. It is a known as a disease known as uh, Wernick Korsakoff disease. Let me write it here. So it is a syndrome, so which means uh, Wernick Korsakoff syndrome. So which means it is a collection of uh, symptoms like uh, uh, you know weakness or paralysis of the eye movement, uh, deranged mental function. All these will are the syndromes of this particular disease. That is purely due to deficiency of this uh, uh, vitamin. Uh, and also remember that alcoholics who are uh, uh, alcoholics have a deficiency of uh, this uh, thiamine pyrophosphate, so that also can have an effect on pentose phosphate pathway production of NADPH. And you have seen the role of NADPH, so it can have uh, on a long term it can have effect on all these. And uh, the second uh, uh, clinical significance of PPP is that is genetical. And that genetically is mainly because due to the deficiency of an enzyme, it's the first enzyme which catalyzes this reaction that is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Now remember, glucose 6-phosphate uh, dehydrogenase is um, um, about 400 million people about 400 million people is deficient, deficient in this particular enzyme. And this is considered to be the, uh, the biggest human enzymopathy. So I'm writing enzymopathy. In the, in the biggest human enzymopathy in the world, roughly about 400 variants of this enzyme is found in many human populations. So therefore, out of these 400 uh, variants, about 140 variants have been characterized. So this is the enzyme, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Now you know that this is responsible for production of uh, um, NADPH in the step number one. So therefore, there is going to be a deficiency of NADPH in this, uh, due to the deficiency of this particular enzyme. This enzyme is an inherited um, X, it, on the X-linked chromosome. Um, there is a very beautiful story about uh, uh, how this deficiency was discovered. So in 1926, um, when medicines like Primaquin, you know that Primaquin is used for treating malaria or 8 amino quinolins. So these were medicines that are used for treating malaria. When patients were treated uh, with these medicines, um, then what happened? They found a lot of uh, hemolysis taking place. RBCs are broken down, hemolysis taking place. So therefore, they began investigating why this hemolysis is happening. That is how they came to know the, uh, the deficiency of this glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. You know that uh, uh, RBCs, if you look at RBCs, RBCs have a lifespan of roughly about 120 to 135 days. That is a lifespan of RBCs. So, so as the RBCs is growing, uh, 
when it is devoid of uh, mitochondria, it is not able to um, synthesize enough ATP molecules, it is not able to carry out the protein synthesis and it has to depend only exclusively on glycolysis for ATP production. So therefore, um, and it is purely an anaerobic uh, um, system. So, um, in this case, many of these pathways are switched off, especially if the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is, is absent, then you know that there is going to be a deficiency of NADPH also, this concentration will decrease. And we need this NADPH for maintaining cell integrity. So, why do we need this to maintain cell integrity? Let us look at that. As you know, every cell due to metabolic stress, etc., will be producing a lot of free radicals. Okay, so free radicals are produced. Uh, these, these free radicals, hydrogen peroxide is produced. So these free radicals can damage cell membrane, especially the phospholipid bilayer can be damaged by these free radicals. So therefore, these are uh, potentially, potentially harmful okay they are potentially harmful molecules so we need to somehow um, change this potentially harmful molecule into harmless water molecule okay so this is harmless harmless water molecules how do we convert so in order to do this uh, reduction process so we need a molecule called GSH. So GSH stands for glutathione. So it has got three amino acids, glutamine, cysteinyl and glycine. So cysteine, as you know, that is a, it has got a sulfhydryl group. So this sulfhydryl group means two such molecules are present. The sulfhydryl group is transferred to this uh, free radicals and it is converted to water molecule. And what happens to this uh, uh, glutathione it gets oxidized so this is the reduced form it gets oxidized to into the oxidized form of glutathione now this reaction uh, is catalyzed by a very interesting enzyme um, interest enzyme with a scavenger role that is glutathione peroxidase remember glutathione peroxidase is one enzyme that has been identified by using selenium as the cofactor okay selenium as a cofactor so therefore what is important for us is um, if the oxidized form of glutathione is formed and the level of glutathione is very important for maintaining cell integrity so therefore all these are converted to the harmless form now how do we get the reduced form of glutathione back this is done with the help of if the NADPH which is produced through uh, is the pentose phosphate pathway. So a constant supply of uh, uh, NADPH through pentose phosphate will ensure that if the, these free radicals are kept in control. So therefore, and this reaction is catalyzed by glutathione reductase. So by the activity of the, these two enzymes, glutathione peroxidase and glutathione reductase, if the cell um, membrane integrity is maintained. So therefore, if we know that um, pentose phosphate pathway has uh, an important role in supplying NADPH. So therefore, if glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is absent, so this concentration will decrease, which means this conversion cannot occur. So which will promote the accumulation of potentially harmful free radicals and those free radicals will damage membrane integrity. This is a very important aspect. Another important clinical function of a pentose phosphate pathway is something to do with the met hemoglobin. So you know that met hemoglobin is those hemoglobin that has got an Fe3+. Plus that is bound to hemoglobin that is called met hemoglobin so normally it is fe2 plus so if it is fe3 plus we call it met hemoglobin about 0 0.3 percentage of hemoglobin is met hemoglobin so the problem with the met hemoglobin is this is unable to bind unable to bind oxygen so this hemoglobin cannot transport oxygen. So therefore there is a need to convert this into normal hemoglobin with Fe2+. So therefore 
For this reduction process, what is important is we need GSH, glutathione is provided. So therefore, as we have seen in the earlier stage, so GSH will become the ox GSHG that is the oxidized form. This is a reduced form. And again, this is getting converted back with the help of NADPH that is produced through the PPP and it is red oxidized to NADP. So therefore, you will see that if the level of uh, met hemoglobin is also kept under control, by either pentose phosphate pathway not only this there are several other enzymes where where the active site um, involves you know the um, sulfhydryl groups all those enzymes are kept at a reducing environment by the help of pentose phosphate pathway so therefore you see that pentose phosphate pathway has got a huge clinical significance